they didn't realize and understand the grace of God. Because right now, we're going to see the grace of God being extended here. And because they were so caught up in their religion, they missed the grace of God coming to those who was in need. So, I want to give an illustration right now. Last week, I want to talk to all the working men here that for me with what I'm about to say, who always know that a working man must keep what in his pocket? A pocket knife. Most working men, anyway. Depends on what type of work you do. But uh, I ended up losing a pocket knife that I had purchased, and it was very helpful to me in my everyday work. And I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and I backtracked, and I backtracked, and I still haven't ran across my knife yet. And when I don't know one, the other morning when I woke up Saturday morning, this passage of scripture was on my heart. And lo and, beho lo and behold, I got a call about from the pastor that wanted me to come minister the word. Now, I wake up thinking about this knife that I lost, and the scripture came about the lost coin, something being lost. I know as many of you have lost some things in your life that were valuable to you. You have searched, looked, wondered, and squandered all about it, but yet you haven't found it. And, man, that thing bothered me. I said, well, you know, um, you got enough money. Go and buy you another night. Ain't nothing. But for me, when something has have a value to it and means something to you, you just don't want to give up to you, give up on it that easily. And... I just kept, and I am telling you, I, have, I ain't went to my job. Yeah, it might be in my truck. And I, I haven't given up on that thing. But when I looked at it from a spiritual standpoint, this is what God told me to share with you this morning. This thing about being lost. And if we look at these parables, there were three things being lost. First, there was a sheep that wandered away. There was 10 pieces of silver. One was lost. And there was two sons. And one wandered away and was lost. Then there was my pocket knife. <laughs> they got away. But I want to, I want to, but you know, just to have a little sense of humor. But uh, this thing stuck with me about being lost. If we look into each and every one of these parables, something was separated from its original owner. And that's what I want us to focus on this morning. We don't focus on the sheep. We're going to focus on that thing that was separated from its rightful owner. And for many that may not know, I'm going to give you a little theological thing about the law, being lost. To be lost is to be separated from God. Separated because of sin. Sin separated us from the love of God. Not, not per se the love, but we're going to say fellowship. Because it said God so loved the world that he gave. So God loved the world. So now God don't love the things that go on in the world. God doesn't love sin. But he loved the world because he created it. So we're going to look at this thing that separates us. Because this is very essential for our salvation. And our walk with God. You know, I, I know many of you that, that know of me and, and that may not know me. But I live a life for the world. So I know what it's like to be lost. I was lost. I was lost, headed to a burning hell. I ain't ashamed to tell nobody about it. Because the thing about being lost is, sometimes you don't know you're lost. But it's a good thing when you recognize that you're lost. So this thing that I went seeking for had me separated from God and I didn't even know it. But I thank God for Jesus. 
I thank God that they, that he didn't give up on me for searching and seeking. You know, because he never went nowhere. See, we lose, when we lose these things, if we look at these texts, these things were separated. The sheep wanted away on his own. Now, the woman she lost, it don't give us much detail on how the corn was lost. We know that it was lost, that she lit a candle, that she swept. You know, and back in those days, they ain't like, oh, look at this beautiful car. Um, and they how they had dirt. They, they, they floor was dirt floors. So it said that she lost it, she swept. So the dirt, some kind of way, must have covered the corn. But the dirt in, the, in, 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 in this text, let me, let, me, let me read it. It says she lit up the candle and swept the house. So now I'm pretty sure it was something in that house that caused her to not be able to find that corn. That corn, we don't know if it was rolled up under the, to or the table, up under the bed. The text don't say, but we know the corn was lost. But there's another thing that it said the woman did. It said she seek diligently. That thing that was lost. Then we go and, and we look at the prodigal son. We know that the son, he got all full of himself. He didn't want to hear what dad had to say no more. So he wanted all that he thought was his. And he wandered away. Lost. In a world full of sin. And I can recall as I was out there. Didn't want to hear what my mama said. She told me many times, Ben, that life you live in, Lord, son, it ain't what you think it is. I had an auntie that lived a saved life. She was a Christian woman. I ain't never see her live no other way. Sometimes I used to run from her when I when she, I see her coming. She used to, she, she she lived a Christian life, but she don't pass on. She said, I always used to see me. She said, being the Lord ain't pleased with where you live it, son. But I thank her for that. Because she always instilled to me something about the Lord. And it registered with me and it stuck with me. So even though when I had to go through my trials of being lost, and had to go in on my own way. God didn't give up on me. Uh, I went away for, for some years. The Lord had to set me down for 14 of them. The Lord set me down for 14. But he ain't let me go. So I want to talk to you about what's in your life today that may have you lost because each one of us got something in our lives that we hide mine is a buffet line eat off your own plate but guess what I know somebody who's able to get me over that thing man I did many things that I, I, I ain't pleased to tell nobody about but I don't like to talk about it you know why because I believe it glorifies Satan but I'm telling you about come glorify Jesus this morning how he changed my life. How he has called me in the ministry to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. Because we need more Jesus, people. And we're going to look at this thing. How this woman, how she went seeking after this thing. She had nine more pieces of silver. I met plenty of y'all around here every day lose 50 cent dollar. But you got a pocket full of money, you let leave that one dollar left to, oh man, I ain't worried about that, I got a pocket full of money. That thing ain't a value to you. But in the eyes of God, you are value. God, that one sinner, the one that's sitting here today, that that thing that he, that's picking at him, that he can't kick it, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's pornography, whatever it is, that don't nobody else know but you and God. That thing got you lost, man. We can sit here and we can look pretty all day. We can come and, and, and hallelujah, praise the Lord. But there's some things that's hid that only you and God know about. That got you lost. That 
That thing got you boggled up in your mind and you ain't know how to break it. But I'm coming to tell you this morning about one that I know who can set you free. The word of God say you got to seek him. Seek him while he can be found. Don't wait till it's too late. But when it says seeking that he may be found, don't mean he lost. Jesus never been lost. God ain't never went, no, he's still on the throne. It's, we, it's us. If you look at the parable, everything that was here, it separated itself from its rightful owner. So when we get lost, it ain't God losing us. We losing ourselves. So I, want, I just want to show you how we're going to have to bring this thing back to its rightful place. Because that thing that you're struggling with in your life, that thing that you think don't nobody know about, that thing that got you bent all up inside and you wondering why my life is this way. When she swept that dirt, she, that, that soul, that coin, is, 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 was a precious metal. And it, it, it's, it's mighty fine that God uses these elements of the earth in his scripture, like gold and silver. And, 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 and you remember when, when Peter and John, with, with the blind man, when, when they were passing by and they wanted something, and they say, oh, Peter, Peter and John told him, say, silver and gold, we have none. But what I have to, for you right. is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, they knew that that precious, that metal, it had some value to it. But it couldn't set the man free. And that coin is, represents our soul, y'all. Our soul being lost. I, I don't have a heaven to hell to put nobody in. But I know there's some people sitting right here on this pew ain't saved. Coming to church don't save you. Praying don't save you. Reading the Bible don't save you. Now those things are essential and good for us. But if we don't understand what true salvation is, it's confessing our sins before the Lord and repenting of other things. Right. Repent means to turn and go the opposite direction. Those are the things that we got to do that we'll be, we'll know. I played church. I don't been to church. I don't went to church, confessed church, but I kept going back out in the world. But God had to sit me down, y'all. He sat me down for 14 painful years. And he told me, he said, being until you surrender your life to me, ain't nothing going to be right. And I'm going to tell you here today, and I'm going to testify, I thank him for it. Because it changed my life. I thank him for Jesus, who is the head of my life. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the, I am the, way the truth and the life. No man can come into the Father but by me. If you're trying to get in any other way, you, you're a thief and a robber. And know that any other way, it could be coming to church, thinking you getting in that way, praying, singing in the choir. That can be one of them other ways that he's talking about. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if you have not truly received him in your heart, knowing that he died for your sin, that he paid the penalty, that nothing, no one else could pay. Right yeah. That God sent him down and down the old rugged cross. Right. That you and I and the whole world may receive salvation. Yeah. Salvation comes through no other. But one thing about it, when he died, he got up. He got up from the grave. See, we say we're living Savior today. See, the old thing that once had me bound and, and I was dead in my sins and in my trespasses that, 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 that the Lord already paid for. And he brought me back to my rightful place. I have something to rejoice about. And you do too. If you know Jesus. And if you don't know him, you can come today and know have something to rejoice about. 
I was glad this morning, man, when I came in here because I just know that I see the hand of God on my life. I may not be the best preacher. I may not be the greatest theologian. But one thing I do know, I know Jesus. I know all that he done for me. I know that when he went to the cross, he paid it all. I know that. I know that he ain't in the tomb. I know that he got up. And I know that he sent it to heaven. Right now, he sits on the right hand of the Father. I know that. I ain't worried about what I've done. See, because the world, and the, and the world, that's all they will. They'll continue to tell you what, what you've done. But they don't want to talk about what he's done. See, see, he, he, he set me free. He delivered me from those things that had me captured. And so, you know, these parables are so unique because these things had lost its rightful owner. But one thing about it, the owner didn't give up. Ain't you glad that God didn't give up for you, on you today? Ain't you glad that all that mess that you got going on in your life, that he haven't given up on you? It's something in your heart to keep telling you to come to this church. That's a, that's a unique thing about the grace of God. God's grace to the sinner. And the religious folk, instead of them coming recognizing that Jesus was doing something good, they were mumming. No, look at it. Look at it. Look at him up there. He ain't that much old, 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 old sinner. Look at all that stuff he did. Now he's talking about he's going to preach the word of God. But I tell you, God can take that thing that's unclean and make it clean. We better quit trying to do God's work. God don't need no help being God. That's one thing I love about God. He don't need no help being God. And he don't need being. He just need being to be available. So whatever that thing is in your, in your life. Only you know. Examine your heart. The Bible says we must examine ourselves daily. You got to examine yourself. Don't look at the person next to you. Examine yourself. See what it is that you struggling with. See what it is that got you lost, wandering away from God. Jesus came, didn't come, came, come save the righteous. He come he came to seek and save those who are lost. And if you're lost this morning, that's the way. But one thing that I do like about all this here, when she sought diligently, to seek is to search, to search out. Don't mean she found what she was looking for at that at that particular moment, but she had to do some searching. She had to do some searching. Sometimes we just think coming to church is enough. But, and it's good, because this is a start, just coming to church. But you have prayer, you have Bible study, Sunday school, you got your word, which sometimes collect a lot of dust. But we got to get in this word, y'all. It says it's a light, a lamp to my feet, and a light unto my path. That's the gospel. That's what the word of God do. It, it, it enlightens you for those things that you might not know about that you're struggling with in your heart. If you get in the word of God, it's, a, it, it's something for every else on this earth, in this book. But we want to just come listen to the preacher. The word of God says in 2 Timothy 2.15, to study thyself. 
It says, study thyself to show thyself approved. It didn't say to Elder Thompson. It didn't say to Pastor Mojo. It said unto God. A workman did not, not be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. Because if you come to church and you don't know this book, and a preacher get up here and tell you something, how you going to know if he's telling the truth? You got to search this book so you'll know. He said, seek, search, he said, seek your own salvation with fear and trembling. I can tell you about Jesus, but if you don't seek him for yourself, you won't find him. Because he ain't going nowhere. But a lot of times we want to we wanna wonder where God, when these things go to happening in our lives, all kind of calamities coming on us. We don't know what's going on, but we want to say, well, Lord, ain't, well, we want to give up on God. God ain't never went nowhere. But if you do, seek diligence, his word, because his word is true. Before I close, there's one more thing. He said in verse 10, he said, likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. But in verse 9, she said, she called all her friends she called her friends and her neighbors. Now, now you look at that. She had friends. So don't think everybody that's your neighbor is your friend. Because look how the word of God put it. It says she called her friends and her neighbors. Why do we think our neighbors all the time are our friends? But, but, but they had to be some good neighbors because she called them over. She said, come rejoice with me. Why wouldn't we, we see somebody get saved? And they come down to the altar. Everybody in their in they, in they seat should jump up and come gather around that person. And show that the joy that's in their heart that this person was lost, but now he's found. She said that was joy. She wanted rejoicing. And I pray this morning that you find that place of rejoicing for everyone that you know who, who was lost and was dying. But the Lord brought them in. You ought to rejoice with that person. When you know that that person was in his lowest estate. But God picked him up. And now you see him and you wonder why he's why he doing the things that he's doing. Why he's, why he's talking the way that he's talking. You ought to rejoice. The scriptures say in each one of these, in each one of these texts, let me let me read it to you out of each one of these. Out of each one of these texts, it says when the when the when the when the sheep was found, it says he he when, and when he came comes home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which were lost. In verse 9, if the dealing with the coin, she said, Rejoice with me. I have found the peace which I was lost. And, if, and, 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 and then when we get to the prodigal son, it says the father. Let me find it. When he seen his son coming home, it said he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great father, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And he, the son said, I, I ain't looking for that. I want to talk about where it says he rejoiced. Scoop right there with that because I can't find it. Let me press it home. But you see how the father was happy. Happy when he 
his son came back to his rightful place. The scripture tells us it's like that in the presence of angels for one sinner that repented. And I know there's somebody here this morning that needs some repentance in the heart. It ain't got to be you lost. It could be something that you don't did that you ain't you ain't took it before the Lord and it, it done caused you to lose fellowship. Fellowship is just not a one time thing. It's a continuous thing going on. When you're married or when you have a real dear friend, that that relationship stays together on fellowship. It's not that you see that friend once a year. How you call somebody your friend, you don't see them once a year sometimes, not even then. But that fellowship. Just set yourself this morning, y'all. We need to examine our hearts. We need to know that we're in the rightful place where God wants us to be. And that's in fellowship through his son, Jesus Christ. I just thank him this morning that he brought me back to that fellowship. You know, my life ain't where I want it to be. But I know that I'm still a work in progress. But I know that also where my heart is at. He says in the word, look to the hill from which cometh thy help. That help coming from the Lord. Keep your eyes on the cross. Don't never leave the cross. Because that's what the grace of God was extended to all. I know we don't hear about much of the cross being preached today. But that is the salvation of God. That he sent his son to die for your sin. So this morning, if anybody here this morning, whether you don't feel that you're not in fellowship, that you separated from God, that you walked away, that you turned away from God, that thing that you can't understand why you're going through with what you're going through, 